Praise the Lord. This is Dr. Alvarez coming to you from the touch of Jesus Christ. Today we have a special guest, Pastor Kevin Moreira from Torch Ministries. He has a tremendous word for you guys today. You are greater than you think. You are greater than you think. Stay tuned and be blessed. Grace and peace. I'm Pastor Kevin Moreira from Torch Ministries. I want to thank God for Apostle Juliester Alvarez for the touch of Jesus Christ Ministries for this wonderful opportunity. I'd like to share with you a powerful, powerful word that will change your life. Doesn't matter if you're a child, a teen, a youth, an adult, or even a senior person. God is going to speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. Open up your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 7. Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 7. And says this, the word of the Lord. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And she said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I'll not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. And he said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have correctly said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When that one comes, he will declare all things to us. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. At this point, his disciples came. And they were amazed that he had been speaking with the woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot. Pay attention to this. The woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? And they went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. 
But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, no one brought him anything to eat, did he? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white for harvest. Already he who reaps is receiving wages and is gathering fruit for life eternal so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the savior of the world. After two days, he went forth from them and they're into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves also went to the feast. My brothers and sisters, I will let you to pay attention. The title of the message is that you are greater than what you think. You are greater than you think. I know it sounds even like a commercial from Scotiabank. You are richer than you think. But here right now at this moment, God is telling you that you are greater than you think. This woman was after things, natural things. Water is something natural. She was a woman that was a Samaritan going to the well probably daily to pick up what she needed. There are many wells in your life. Some of your wells is water, it's food. Some of your wells is your part-time, your full-time, an extra time job. Some of your wells could be your school. Some of the wells in your life can be media, sports, entertainment, your cell phone, your iPad, your iPhone, your internet access, your computer, your video games. There are many wells in our lives. I like to tell you right now in the name of Jesus that you are what you seek you become what you are seeking if you're seeking these things you tend to look like these things whatever you ask you shall receive whatever you seek you shall find whatever you knock it shall be open to you Jesus said ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door shall be open to you it's interesting that this woman goes to the well and she meets a different well this well is called Jesus of Nazareth. This well is called Yeshua HaMashiach. This well is known as Jesus the Messiah, the Christ. She doesn't know it. And she goes to a temporary well. I came to tell you right now in the name of Jesus that the well that you are drinking from daily, monthly, yearly is a temporary well. But the well that God wants you drinking from the source is a well that is eternal. A well that you will never go thirsty from again. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. He that eats from me shall never go hungry again. He is the water of life that if you drink of him, you shall never go thirsty. It's funny how Jesus evangelizes this woman. He's there at the well and his disciples go to look for food. The Bible is not clear about if he asked the disciples to go for food or if they went to search for food. Regardless, Jesus is there at this well and he starts a relationship with this woman. Pay attention that Jesus is not religious, but relational. The father is relational and not religious. Relationships is greater than religion. Relational 
genuine friendships. Relationships are greater than religion. Jesus is greater than religion. And he's there, a Jew, now speaking to a Samaritan. He's coming out of his comfort zone. The word became flesh. He came down from heaven, the greatest Messiah, the greatest missionary, the greatest apostle. He came out of his glory, his throne, came down to earth to speak to you and I. Jesus, being a Jew, is now evangelizing a Samaritan, speaking to her. And the first thing he says is, give me a drink. Jesus will always ask you for something. There's always something that Jesus is asking of you. He comes to you right now and he's saying, give me a drink. You've been drinking from different things. Give it unto Jesus. Give him your addiction. Give him your time. Give him your energy. Give me a drink, the Lord is saying. He's saying to you right now, he's saying, give me a drink of what you are drinking. Internet, time, energy, your job, your loads, your burden, whatever you're drinking of. He's saying, give me a drink. The Lord Jesus, majesty, Emmanuel, God with us, God himself is tasting of the water that we drink. But he's inviting you right now to drink of his water, to drink from his source, to drink from him. He is the source. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father but through Jesus. He's saying, give me a drink. And how is it that you, the woman answered, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her and said to her, if you only knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked and he would have given you living water. It's very interesting how she responds. Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Many of us here are looking at Jesus like this. He has nothing to give me. This well that I'm drinking is deep. Where can I get this living water? I came to tell you that Jesus has all you need. Jesus is enough, and he is deeper than any well that you are searching. You become what you are searching. You become from what you are searching. You become. You manifest what you are drinking from, from what you are eating. You are what you eat. You are what you drink, spiritually and physically. Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? And again, Jesus is speaking to this woman and look how she compares him to Jacob you are not greater than our father Jacob are you who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle Jesus wisely answers her saying everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst but the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Jesus is the water that you need to drink from. This water you shall never go thirsty of. You have tried drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. You have tried so many things. But the challenge right now is try Jesus. Give him your attention now. Whatever you're doing right now, Jesus is telling you, give me a drink. I want relationship with you. I don't want religion. I want relationship. I want you drinking from me. You have correctly said, I have no husband. She says to him, I have no husband. Jesus asks her a personal question saying, what, bring me your husband so that you can drink of this water. And she was honest in saying, I have no husband. You have correctly said I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have truly said. Maybe you, not only five husbands, but you have tried five jobs, five careers, or even five wives, five husbands, five children, five sources. But you are unsatisfied. You are frustrated. You are exhausted. You are in depression, oppression. Something is up. 
you are not happy. You are not satisfied. You have not found love and joy and peace. You can't sleep at night because you're going to searching for different wells. Wells that are temporary. Wells that cannot satisfy your soul. The title of this message is, You Are Greater Than You Think. That Jesus, despite this woman being a sinner, is reaching out to this woman. And now I start my message. I came here to tell you that you are greater than what you think. Jesus, still believing in this woman, says, woman, look how he calls her. He doesn't call her dear. He doesn't call her my love, precious one. Woman. And says, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know of. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. You worship what you do not know of. But here Jesus is saying to you, but an hour is coming. And now is when the true worship, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You can't worship without Holy Spirit. You can't worship without the truth. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life right now, wherever you are right now. Holy Spirit, come up to them right now. Holy Spirit, come unto them. There's only Holy Spirit or evil spirits. But Holy Spirit of God, touch them right now. You cannot worship the Father without the Holy Spirit. You cannot worship with the Father without Jesus. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is a person. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. He, she then says, there is a Messiah coming and the Lord Jesus reveals himself to her. The Lord Jesus is revealing himself to you saying, I am the Messiah. I'm not only a prophet. She considered him a, a prophet. She considered him a stranger. That now the Lord reveals to her that she is her, her, her savior. Jesus is your savior. And he's saying, I who speak to you am he, your savior. The savior is not any politician. The savior of your life is no boss, no client, no husband, no wife, no children. Nothing you have is your savior, but Christ Jesus is your savior. And I came here to encourage some of you right now. I came here to encourage you that you are greater than you think. Verse 28 says, the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, listen, my brothers and my sisters, you have to leave the water pot. The water pot is what she was bringing water for her needs. She left her needs. She left the water pot to seek after the true well, which is Christ. That need that she had of drinking that water was no longer needed. Now she left that water pot because she found the water of life. You become the living well. When you meet Christ, you become a well that springs forth living waters. Within you, there will be rivers of living water flowing from you. You become the well that you are seeking. Why do new covenant Christians continue to insist on emulating old covenant Jews? Who are but a shadow of Christ. He, Jesus is greater than Jacob in this story. Jesus is greater than Abraham, Moses, and Joshua, and Elijah, and David, and Daniel. Jesus is greater than anyone on the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Jesus is greater than anything, but they all pointed to Jesus. How about we emulate Jesus, who is the substance instead of the shadows? People of the world, I don't want to be part of the Joshua generation. I don't want to be part. I want, I want to be part of the Jesus generation. I don't want to be a watchman on the wall. I want to be crucified with Christ. I don't want to be like Moses, who only saw the back of God. I want to be someone in Christ who will one day see him as he is. I don't want a double portion of the anointing like Elijah gave to Elisha. I want the same anointing of the Holy Spirit that Jesus pours out on the church. I don't want to be like David who conquered Goliath. I want to be like Jesus who conquered death, 
hell and the grave. I don't want to be like Daniel who survived the lion's den. I want to be a child of God who defeats the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion. The best Old Testament saint doesn't compare to the weakest New Testament believer. The best Old Testament saint doesn't compare to the weakest New Testament believer. And you may be asking me, Pastor Kevin, prove it to me. Of what you're saying, prove it. I tell you that you are greater than any Old Testament and New Testament person in the Bible. The only one that you are not greater than is Jesus Christ. And I'll prove it to you right now. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 17, these are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, for since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2, beloved, now we are children of God and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because he will see him just as he is. We will be like him because we will see him just as he is. I end with this. Luke chapter 7 verse 28. Look what Jesus Christ is saying. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. My brothers and sisters, this woman of Samaria is greater than John. My brothers and sisters, the thief on the cross that said, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus answered, not only will I remember you, but today you will be with me in paradise. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is saying, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I came here to tell you that you are greater than what you think. That this woman, hallelujah, from Samaria is greater than John. The least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. You are greater than Moses, than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, than David, than Zechariah, than Zephaniah, than Haggai, than, than Amos, than Ezekiel, than Daniel, than Isaiah, than Jeremiah, than all these prophets. You are greater than Peter, than Paul. All is yours, whether Paul, whether Apollos, whether Peter, Cephas, all is yours. All is yours. The Bible here is saying, Jesus is saying, I tell you, People of God, wherever you're listening from, from North America, Central America, South America, Europe, Africa, Indonesia, Asia, Australia, Oceania, wherever you're listening to me right now, I came here to tell you and reveal to you great and mighty things that you do not know of. I tell you among those born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Luke 7, 28. This woman from Samaria, Jesus is telling her. And he's telling you and I. Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him, in her, a well of water springing up to eternal life. You are greater than what you think. It doesn't matter if you think that right now you're the thief on the cross. Then you think you're not the woman from Samaria. You, you think that there's no way for you. You're hopeless. You feel that there's no hope. I tell you, there is hope. Have faith in the Lord. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Receive faith right now. Receive hope right now. Receive encouragement right now. You are greater than what you think. In the name of Jesus, receive strength. Receive encouragement, receive power from on high. Receive the kingdom, the power, and the glory anointing right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you right now that you will rise up and you will say to yourself, I am greater. I am greater than any person in the Bible but Jesus Christ. You are what the Bible says you are. You have what the Bible says you have. The story isn't done. The story is not done. 
you, you, you have everything. You have the word of God. You have the spirit of God. You have the blood, the witnessing, the water of the word of God. The Holy Spirit is upon you right now. Wherever you are right now, receive the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. Receive the touch of Jesus Christ. Receive the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God, communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Receive it. I bless you. I bless you and your family. I bless you with blessings from the Father. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And he's touching you right now. I ask you to make a decision to follow Christ, to become a disciple of Jesus. Not a Christian, not only a Christian or an evangelical or a Pentecostal or a Baptist, no. Become a disciple of Jesus. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the great commission that Jesus gave to us in Matthew 28. You are greater than what you think. You're greater than what you think. While you sleep tonight, I want you rise in the morning. Understand. That everything is yours. All is yours. Nothing is impossible for God. That you are greater than what you think. That this woman from Samaria, the man on the cross, the thief on the cross, my brothers and sisters, if this word does not touch you, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That they will know that even if they think they are the least in the kingdom of God, they are greater. They are greater because your word says that the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. What a promise from God. What a promise from the Lord. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter your class. It doesn't matter where you come from in the world. My brothers and sisters, God loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you. I greet you, and I say bye to you with a love, with a hug. With give, I, I give a hug unto all of you, a kiss. May God bless each and every one of you. Receive his love. Receive his grace. Receive his mercy. Receive his peace in the name of Jesus. I bless you. May you remember this word. And may this word produce fruit in your heart. May you apply these principles in your life. Knowing that Jesus is not only a prophet. Not only a good person. He is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I take it you were blessed by the word from Pastor Kevin. We're all about New Testament principles and what Jesus has done at the cross and what Christ has made us a new creation. If you are anywhere near Canada Christian College, 50 Java Drive, come visit us so you can experience the power of God in a life-changing word that will transform you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, let's do a prayer right now that you may learn and, and experience Jesus right where you are. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you right now. I ask you to take away all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Become Lord of my life and lead all my steps from this day forward. Amen. The simple prayer is just the beginning steps of your relationship with Jesus. I encourage you, grab a Bible, begin to read his word, pray, begin to talk to the Father in his name, and experience the awesomeness of the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned.